Hey everyone, this is Owen with Motion Array, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you some techniques for styling strokes in After Effects. All right, let's get started. So the first one we'll be covering is this dotted line drawing on like a map. So I'll go over to this composition, and it's 1920 by 1080, 2997. And you can see here that that line just draws on, and then it draws right back off. This one's pretty straightforward to create, but it can be tricky to animate. I'll go ahead and just delete these existing lines so that we can start from scratch. With no layer selected, I'll use the pen tool and I'll go ahead and draw out the path that I want. Then I'll go down into the new shape layers contents and I'll go ahead and delete that fill. I'll change the name to path and I'll increase my stroke to 20 pixels and I'll change the color to a red. I'll twirl down my stroke menu and if you go down to the very bottom you'll see that there's an option for dashes. And to the right of it there's a plus and a minus button. Right now I can't use the minus button because there's nothing to remove. So if I hit the plus button you'll see the default settings for the dash and that default setting is a 10 pixel dash with a 10 pixel gap. If I change that dash setting, I'm changing it so that my dash is 47 and my gap is also 47. If I wanted to just change my gap, I just need to hit the plus button one more time and it gives me a gap setting. And by default, it's set to 10. So now I have dashes that are 47 long and a gap of 10 between each one. For this stroke, I'm gonna set my dash to 50 and my gap to 30. I think that works pretty well. If you want to have even more control, you can keep adding dashes and gaps to get really custom looking strokes. But for this one, I'm not going to do that. Now I'll add a trim paths to this path. And in my trim path setting, I'll set a keyframe for end at frame zero for zero percent. And then I'll go ahead to frame 60 and I'll set that end to 100%. Then for my start, I'll go to frame 45 and set a keyframe for 0% and then I'll go to frame 105 and set that to 100%. Then I'll go ahead and highlight all these keyframes, right click on one and go to keyframe assistant easy ease. Now, when I'm previewing this animation, I can see that it animates on just fine. But when it animates off, it does this kind of weird snaky thing. And what's happening is that the end is moving the whole stroke. And that's not really what I'm going for here. So this is where animating these strokes can be kind of tricky with dashed lines. If this was a solid line, then you wouldn't have to worry about this. The easiest thing I've found for animating these dotted line paths is to use an alpha mat to animate them on and off. So to do that, I'll duplicate this path and I'll go into the duplicates options and I'll go to the shape, stroke, and I'll get rid of the dashes. Then I'll rename it to path mat. Then in the original path, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the trim paths. And I'll also set the track mat to alpha mat. If I ram preview now, you'll see that I'm getting the animation I want on and off. So that does it for dash strokes. The next that we'll be working on is this neon light bulb. And you can see that the rays sort of animate on and off like a light turning on and off. So I've already imported my light bulb from Illustrator and then turned it into shape layers. And you can do this to any stroke or any shape, really. So it doesn't have to be a light bulb. You can just use whatever you have available to you. The first thing I'll do is select all my strokes, and then I'll change the width to 20 pixels. Then I'll go in and I'll change the colors individually. So for my rays, I'm going to change that to a pale orange because this color is going to be the lit up core of the neon. So it's not going to be very saturated and it's going to be pretty bright. I'll also use that color for the light bulb itself. And for the base, I'll do a blue.
Then with one of them selected, I'll go up to Layer, Layer Styles, Inner Glow. And when I go into my Inner Glow settings, it looks like it's remembered the last settings I used. So I'll just go ahead and hit Reset so we can go through this together. So Inner Glow by default is meant to sort of create a glowing edge, but we're going to kind of be doing the opposite and making a dark edge. So I'll switch my Blend Mode to Multiply and my Opacity to 100%. I'll set my choke to 3%, my size to 10, and my range to 25%. Then I'll go into my color and select a darker version of the original color. And I also want it to be much more saturated. And that's looking pretty good. Now what I can do is I can select this inner glow and copy it with Command C and I can go to my bulb and paste it. And it'll just go ahead and inherit all those settings. I'm also gonna paste it on my base. And all I need to do is go in there and go to my inner glow settings and change that color to a darker version of that blue. And I should be all right. Yeah, that's looking good. To create that animation for the light rays, I'm gonna add a trim paths to the ray layer. In the trim path settings, I'm going to set a keyframe for end for 100% at frame zero. Then I'll move ahead 20 frames and I'll change that value to 50%. And then I'll move 20 more frames and make it back up to 100%. I'll highlight all these keyframes and I'll right click on one and go to toggle hold keyframe. Then I'll option click on the stopwatch by end and I'll go to Property, Loop Out Duration. And by doing that, it's gonna loop out this animation of them shrinking and growing every 20 frames. So now all that's left to do is to add the unlit dark version of the neon tube. So what I'll do for that is I'll duplicate these rays and I'll drag it beneath the original and call it Dark Rays. I'll twirl down the layers contents and I'll get rid of the trim paths. Then I'll change the color of the stroke to a dark gray. Inside the layer styles, I'll just go into the inner glow and I'll change that orange to another dark gray. And the last thing I'll do is I'll set this opacity to say 50%. And I think that looks pretty good. So that does it for the neon style stroke. The last style we're going to cover is this blobby shaded look. So you can see it's got this sort of dark shadow at the top of it, and it's got this sort of blobby hand drawn inky feel. So yeah, in the spirit of starting from scratch, we will delete this line and then I'll grab my pen tool and redraw it out. All right, so I've got that line and I'll change the name to line and then I'll twirl it down, go to the contents and I'll delete that fill. I'll also go ahead and change the color of the stroke from dark gray to red. I'll twirl down my stroke options and I'll switch it from butt cap to round cap so that I get those round ends. And I'll go ahead and thicken this up to 30 pixels and it looks like I'm gonna to need to adjust that path just a little bit so it doesn't get too close to my type. Then I'm gonna to go to the Add menu and add a Trim Paths to it. In my Trim Paths option, I'll set a keyframe at frame zero for 0% 0 for the end, and then I'll go up to frame 25 and set that to 100% at frame seven. I'll set a keyframe for the start at 0% and then at frame 28, I will set that to 100%. Then I'll highlight all but that last keyframe and I'll easy ease them. And so now I have my line animated. To make this look a little bit nicer, I'm gonna adjust some of the influence values. So I'll use our script under the influence to add 60% for the outgoing on this start and 100% for this incoming here. 
So that gives me a little bit longer line. If you're interested in the Under the Influence script, it's free to download and we've got a link for it in the video description below. All right, so we've got this animating now. We just need to make it look blobby and hand-drawn. So with the layer selected, I'll go up to Effect, Stylize, Roughen Edges. In my Roughen Edges settings, I'll set my border to 30 and my scale to 300. Then I'm gonna option click on the evolution to pull up the expression menu and I'll type in the expression time times 300. So that way it'll always be moving. And so that gives us that sort of blobby moving look. The last thing to do is to add that shadow in it. So to do that, I'm gonna have my layer selected and I'll go to layer, layer styles, inner shadow. In the inner shadow settings, I'm just gonna set that opacity to 25% and let me go ahead and move my timeline so we can see it. And I'll change the distance to 12 so we get more of that shadow. And I think the rest of the settings are good to go. And so that's all there is to it, to that hand-drawn blobby looking stroke. Well, that concludes this tutorial. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you did and you'd like to see more tutorials, please go ahead and subscribe because we're making new ones all the time. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.